Hello everybody and welcome back to another not applicable Formula 1 video. I hope that you are well. I hope you're prepared for Mexico, although we do have to wait a couple of weeks after the United States Grand Prix. And I am raring to go for Mexico. This season has been absolutely incredible. Five races left to go. And my goodness me, I just I just want it to happen right now. I need to know what happens at the end of this season. It's like a really good TV show. You just need to know what happens at the end. But we have to be a little bit patient. And in that time of patience, I thought I'd talk about one man who's come back onto the Formula 1 grid and has been absolutely sensational in my opinion, Fernando Alonso. Since coming back into Formula 1 though, he has been a little bit critical of the FIA throughout the season. And it's come in the form of track limits in particular and how the FIA sort of doesn't hold the same rules consistently around different tracks and around different circuits when it comes to track limits. And Alonso has continually complained about drivers gaining an advantage, particularly on lap one of Grand Prix, where rivals have been able to gain positions on the Spaniard, despite Alonso's phenomenal driving talents, especially in the first couple of laps of the race. I think back to that Silverstone uh, sprint qualifying where he was absolutely sublime similar in Monza as well like he is one of the best drivers off of the line and he's had some little issues like mainly if we go back to Austria that double header in Austria to find examples of these complaints from Alonso he sort of had an issue with Daniel Ricciardo and Charles Leclerc in particular where they were able to leave the track on turn one because they, they had ran wide and they were able to gain back positions on Alonso that he had gained throughout that turn one. So Alonso had thought, you know, I've taken those positions correctly. They've gone off the track and able to gain an advantage. Yes, they haven't overtaken me on the track, but the way that they've gained traction, they've gained track position by coming back onto the track and then continuing with that straight line speed, they've been able to gain positions back on him. And he wasn't too happy about this. And he's talked about this in the press and in drivers meetings too. But it's come to no real avail for Alonso and nothing has really happened, to be honest with you. And this has now come to a head over the last few races. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get your guys' opinions on this as well. Because over the last few races, Alonso has started to bend these rules in his favor just slightly i think russia is the main one that comes to everybody's head when we think about this you know T turn two in Russia, first lap of the Grand Prix, and Alonso completely ignores that that corner even exists and just beelines a straight through the escape road. And basically, now he didn't gain any positions from this. I think that's where people are a little bit confused. But what he did was guarantee that he wasn't going to lose any positions because coming out of the escape road, he was an impressive P4, obviously went on to finish P6 in that race as well. So had a phenomenal Grand Prix in Russia. But that first corner did really help him along the way. The question started to be asked when it was pointed out that he'd practiced going through the escape road on the way to the grid. And yes, it is completely legal because he went through the escape road and that was the regulations and he met those regulations that were set by the FIA. But whilst also sticking to a metaphorical middle finger up to the FIA at the same time because he definitely, definitely did that on purpose. And I absolutely love every single minute of Alonso just being as picky and as annoying as he can possibly be to the FIA. Just for reference, Gasly, Giovinazzi and Verstappen all completed that corner in a very similar way behind him. But through leaving the escape road, they either maintained their position or lost positions. Whereas Alonso, yes, he maintained his position, but he gained a massive advantage on the people behind him because he was coming into that corner very, very wide indeed. And as I said, although he didn't gain a position... It, he did manage to, you know, make sure that he slotted in behind George Russell, by the way. He was running in third. What a mental season we've been having. George Russell was in third place. Just just in a Williams, because he's he's that good. But anyway, it took any chance of him colliding with Stroll, Ricardo, or Hamilton, and he'd have most likely lost places to those three drivers who were on the inside line. But by going through the escape road, he guaranteed himself coming out of that corner in fourth place. So it was a little bit of a sticking point for me. And obviously Alonso, he did, 
you know, not break any of the rules. He did what he was supposed to do. And then it came to the US Grand Prix. And again, it's Alonso in this middle of this track limits tussle. Last time out in the US, he again, Alonso and Alpine were on the radio to the FIA. First of all, when Alonso was battling with Kimi Raikkonen. So actually it came into turn one, Kimi Raikkonen and Fernando Alonso. Is it 2005? Apparently it is. We're going wheel to wheel. And honestly, you'd have thought they were fighting for the lead. They were going absolutely hard at each other. But Raikkonen is off the track when the two cars actually then collide. And that's where I start to, you know, be a little bit more interested in this because Raikkonen is fully off the track. And as they come together, Alonso is the car ahead of the two. But because they collide in such a way, Alonso's then forced to pull out a little bit of the next corner. So Alonso's argument being that, Yes, Kimi Raikkonen didn't gain the position by going off of the track, but by going off the track, he gained an advantage for the next corner. And Kimi ran off the track, maintained his speed, and took the place back off of Alonso. Even though the overtake didn't happen off the track, I'm a little bit 50-50 on this. And the advantage that the Kimi gained was the speed and traction he was able to gain from that corner. So... A few laps later, you know, that seemingly has been resolved and Kimi Raikkonen ended up keeping that place for a little while until Alonso eventually caught him. But a few laps later, Alonso is battling with the other Alfa Romeo in Giovinazzi and down into turn 12, Alonso goes incredibly deep, goes off the track, trying to overtake him by being the latest of the breakers, comes back onto the track behind Giovinazzi again in turn 13 but it's able to overtake him through turns 13 and 14 so again overtake off the track no but gained an advantage helping him to overtake in the next couple of corners so he did give that place back to Giovinazzi though so a very sort of similar incident to the one with Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi Raikkonen did not give the place back whereas Alonso did end up giving the place back to Giovinazzi. Then part two of this comes a few laps later, where Giovinazzi now is the car that runs wide, keeping himself ahead of Alonso through turns 12 and 13. And now I would argue that this uh, this incident is almost identical to the one with Kimi Raikkonen just down into turn 12 rather than in turn one. But again, it's Giovinazzi who's able to keep that position. Eventually, Giovinazzi does concede that 11th place to Alonso and Alfa Romeo got on the radio. But for me, it was basically identical and Alfa Romeo were the ones to give that call for the position to be given back to Alonso you know rather than going to the FIA after Alpine Alonso and the FIA had already been on the radio to each other multiple times throughout the Grand Prix already Alfa Romeo just decided you know what let's give Alonso about the place and we'll see if Giovinazzi can get in the next one so Again, we have that track limits, that inconsistency that we're seeing from the FIA. And this is the thing that Alonso really has a problem with. The massive inconsistency when it comes to these track limits. Is it just if you make the overtake off the track? But what about any advantages you gain from being off the track as well? Like we see in qualifying all the time. The FIA are more than happy to take away a lap from somebody when it comes to qualifying. But when it comes to the race, they're a little bit more lackadaisical. And again, it depends whether you're at the front or the back of the grid as to how much attention they're really paying to you. And it should be consistent for everybody throughout the entire thing. So Alpine are obviously on the radio discussing this with the FIA, discussing both of those incidents with Alonso. And again, of course, it is Alonso in the middle of it. And Alonso, who's actually losing out this time rather than gaining from this track limits controversy, in my opinion, ended up breaking his rear wing because of that contact with Kimi Raikkonen. And then dropping out of the race. You know, he might not have picked up any points, fair enough. But at the same time, we don't want to see drivers dropping out of the race because of these kind of incidents. So it was strange to me. Kimi Raikkonen was allowed to keep his place. Giovinazzi wasn't allowed to keep his place. I'm not sure where I stand on this. And, you know, Alonso is still unhappy with these rules and shows that inconsistency. And I think the entire grid is not really 100% sure what they can and can't do in terms of track limits. You know, we continually see drivers taking over other drivers and unless there's literally like a gravel trap or a wall 
we don't really know the limits of what the drivers can do when off the track. And it seems to be one rule for one person and a slightly different rule for another. So Alonso clearly has an issue of this. I think it's an issue that the FIA does need to stamp out in the next couple of races. It's not something that I want to see going into 2022, especially if we are guaranteed that these cars are going to be racing each other closer and harder than ever before. Like we don't want these controversies to get in the way of that quality of racing that we're hoping to see. The real issue will arise when something like this happens at the front of the grid and, you know, when it's right in between the eyes of the FIA. If this was Hamilton and Verstappen, we'd have been talking about this a lot, lot more. But, you know, it's just Fernando Alonso that has an issue with this at the moment. He's the one bringing it up to the FIA. If it would have been a Red Bull or Mercedes, we'd maybe see something different. So, of course, every track and every incident is slightly different, but... I just like some clarity on these rules and some consistency, the same as Fernando Alonso. It is confusing for the drivers, it's confusing for the teams, and it's confusing for the fans because we just don't really know where to stand. And when you've got lots and lots of new fans entering the sport, obviously we saw in America how big Formula One has become there in the last few years, and it could be even bigger still. So when you've got lots and lots of new fans coming to a sport, you want the rules to be as clear as possible. But what do you think? What do you think to when it comes to Fernando Alonso? Are you happy that he's back in the sport? Are you happy that he's bringing this up to the FIA? Or is it just something that we need to leave behind? Should the FIA be more stringent? or maybe more lenient when it comes to these track limits and overtaking? And how quickly do they need to act on these track limits as well? Because it was a few laps before Alonso really got any clarity about the Kimi Raikkonen situation. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before Christmas. We're absolutely screaming through 4,000 now. Thank you so much. Leave a like, subscribe. I said that before, didn't I? Oh, well, here we go. See you later. Bye.